What's up friends? I am just waiting to meet with some of my crew and the bucket truck to put fuel in it. And um, I thought I, I kind of want to talk about this rope chipper thing that is a reoccurring theme in the industry. Just recently, some of you know my friend Joe, Samurai Joe, he calls himself. I despise handles, but you know, whatever works for people. You got a name? Why don't you use the name you, you've been given? But anyway, uh, I love Joe, Samurai Joe. He is a quality human. And recently working for another company, not that the company is, uh, not that I'm any better, but um, their newer ground man, industrious young man, easier, uh, e eager to please, he fed Joe's rope into the chipper was not the climbing line it was the rigging line and it uh, pulled him up the tree because the rope was through a block and some x-rings battered him up you know it was a harrowing experience uh, broke his uni cinder in half which cut his nose made him look a little rough and uh, really really lucky to be alive He's back to work now, you can see here's what he looks like uh, a few days later. But it's just it's just so unnecessary and uh, we go, it's our favorite, I don't want to say favorite, it's what we talk about more than any other safety subject on my crew because it happened to me, it happened to me years ago. Ground man was told repeatedly, please watch out, you're scaring me, you're getting uh, close to the chipper if my ropes tangled in the limb unhook it from the limb before you drag it over to the chipper because I don't know that you know that it's tangled and you're gonna get to it I have to take evasive action as soon as I see what looks like a tragedy uh, staging anyway it happened repeated warnings literally on that day chip my rope I was in the top of a cedar and I had it all stripped out probably 90 feet up and I was up in the five inch area and my flip line around the tree was enough resistance that the rope it was arborplex you know 6,000 pound test or whatever so it, it's it, it didn't spool up on the drum to the point of um, killing me or breaking the top out of the tree which was amazing but um, it pulled it tight enough to sever the line which ended up pile up in a tree behind me and above me so it was a lot of forces there I, I, I kind of broke down how did this happen you can see check out this video with uh, Traver this is like really recent I happen to see this on Instagram hey. Traver's trying to connect with the guy about the rope and he seems to not really be connecting, not really understanding the gravity of it. And this is the feeling I had the day that my rope was chipped. Is, I, we weren't, it wasn't coming across. How do I, how do I put it? I felt like he did not understand, like, no, please, don't kill me, you know? And it's like somebody may be thinking, well, I got it, you know, yeah. Don't be dramatic, but maybe, maybe they don't. You have to know that they got it. So a warning sign that I noticed is the ground man with me in this case did not want to be there. He was filling in, it wasn't his deal. This was not his passionate job. This is not what he wanted to be doing. And my harping about the rope was just like, sounded like Charlie Brown's mom because what it's not rocket science he had it figured out and later I, he told me he didn't realize that the drum behind the feed wheel was the problem 
he figured he was just going want 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 when I talk because he figured if the rope got caught he would just run over there and reverse the feed wheel you know who cares why am I making such a big deal out of it and that's obviously that in combination with him not wanting to be there and wishing he was somewhere else kind of made took his head out of the game and made a real dangerous environment for me so why is my crew so good right now the guy, the guys that work for me now what makes them stand out because i've had a lot of warm bodies over the years working for me who uh, were just looking for a job you don't want your crew to be there because they're looking for a job first you want them there because they're just pumped about the life you know and and if they are then they're gonna sponge up all the little life-saving details chipping the brush pleasing the boss you know he's energetic whatever whatever the reason is to to not put the priority of the line ahead of getting the mess cleaned up you know the mess on the ground it kind of kind of messes with your head you, you don't want it there it, you the thing between you being done and going home is that mess so I could see how it kind of takes over but think about it like this the guy in the tree is got bombs that he's dropping okay if he's if he's good if he's conscientious he's gonna be counting hats where is everybody before he releases this man killing bomb right he's counting hats he doesn't want to kill anybody he's very aware of the power he has the rope on the ground near the chipper or near a passing car or whatever it is is the ground man's bomb that could kill if he doesn't manage it correctly he literally has a man killing bomb at his disposal so just awareness of it may allow you to see something wrong with the rope like maybe it's been cut maybe it doesn't have enough to reach the ground maybe you could tie a knot in it whatever I could just go on forever but what's but what do you do with somebody after after that I don't I think it's case by case Chances are, you know, there's guard for life and and they're a, a valuable asset still if they're into the career. You know, I'm reminded of the school teacher. She was actually a vice principal. People hating on somebody who who, who has an accident like that doesn't really fix anything and, and doesn't doesn't change anything or make them more safe. Um the vice principal principal that that used usually went to the office after she dropped her kid off at daycare this day she had to swing in drop some papers off at the office and then go to daycare well as soon as she got to the office then the, the phone rang and and somebody came in and various things happened that distracted her they say that humans can only like keep track of six important things at a time or something anyway terrible scenario is she forgot about the baby in the car baby dies of heat everyone goes on a hate mission and and her response is you're right I don't deserve to live you know this is a loving mom who made a terrible mistake I don't think I've ever been more sorry for a person in my life I had more empathy than for this lady I mean of course I feel for the baby the baby's gone but man to be that person you know and the guy on the ground that day that chipped my rope it was my dad what would it have been like for him to have seen the top bust out of that tree and then have me just get yarded and slammed into the chipper and killed uh, my dad you know he's been on jobs since then it's not his life it's not his deal but uh he will he will never chip another rope i guarantee that and this kid he's probably you know he's a really industrious and eager to please kid he's probably it's probably not time to fire him what are some solutions talk to the ground men first maybe since we're picking on them first of all find a way to love your job or just quit do something else 
work up the ladder if that's where you want to go you want to be a climber or whatever get stoked about it be the best rope man you know I worked for some that's a cool job uh, that's just as important as anything is running that rope smooth I worked when I was over in Maryland working with uh, David driver his rope man um, Adam um, he doesn't want to be a climber he is a good rope man he is he is making the climber look good it's a cool job find a way to love your job if you don't love it leave if you're working for beer leave just it's not worth it and be vigilant with the rope proximity to the chipper don't put the chipper close to the rope keep an eye on the rope rope comes first mess comes second think of the rope as the thing that is your way to kill him if you don't manage it first so manage it maybe you'll notice something else wrong with it maybe you'll notice it's been cut maybe you notice it's too short have to tie a knot in it something but these are these are ways to just be vigilant with that and communicate get helmets that talk to each other bosses <laughs> uh, shoot if the boss don't do it get it for yourself uh, it's cool it's so nice to to be able to communicate from ground to tree and tree to ground and you know talk about plans for the weekend and talk about how you're not gonna die today or whatever uh, really important is communication and climbers same thing be vigilant talk about the proximity to the chipper don't put it too close don't just harp on them make sure they like see the whites of your eyes and understand that it's do or die you have to understand you have to make that connection uh, don't settle for kind of a mumbled okay I get it you know I get it well no not getting it it's it's really important if Joe had been killed the other day it would not have been his fault I see the I see the guys come in so um, expect compliance climbers and again with the communication so yeah and give them the uh, the I count hats to keep you alive your bomb that you could kill me with is my rope kind of give them that speech I just thought of it you know I just made it up but it seems like it kind of makes sense use that um, other other things you know a couple of more pragmatic things SRT climbing you only need is enough rope to reach the ground so you don't necessarily need a big coil of rope laying around down there SRT climbing could be a great um, help in keeping ropes out of chippers it's not necessarily going to help with the rigging line but wow climb rope SRT pretty uh, intriguing thought if not you're doing DDRT climbing keep the rope with you maybe old school we did it all the time we had the rope on a coil on our belt and uh, we did it that way it's not optimum really though because you need to be able to bail quick and hit the ground if you have to uncoil the rope off your belt then it's not optimum other guys will use a backpack and that's probably better you got a backpack with your rope in it peace of mind I know where my rope is no ground man you know you just just can't trust maybe there's too many down there and, and you just haven't made the connection keep the rope with you um, I saw a movie with the Secret Service guys bailing off of a building and they had a cylindrical bag that was on the outside of their lower leg and that way the rope orientation is out of your belay whatever you're using as a hitch and down into this bag it's a smooth rappel uh, I'd like to see that happen for the tree world any gear people out there listening uh, treestuff.com get on that that is some trick stuff that is a cool solution maybe I shouldn't just geese it out there like that but wow I'd sure like to see that that would be really 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 cool also the bandit chipper now that has this rope shearing thing on it wow uh, why not you know my chipper uh, more bark chipper has this thing that kind of senses when your hand gets in there uh, what about this rope shearing it's just another step I mean yeah I want one I want one I want one on my chipper that'd be really cool maybe they'll just start making them that way you can take the the
There you go. Alright. Will you? Yeah, we're gonna go up to Mead. Mead, Mead. It's uh, on 7th Street. I'm just gonna... Okay. I'm just gonna finish this little uh, video I'm shooting and then I'll lead you out. Okay. Alright, I'm almost done. Alright. Thanks. Okay, so why am I talking about this? Basically, I'm just talking about it because I can, because I have an audience. Seems important. And you know, if, if Joe had been taken out, just the thought of that, it's just the unnecessary. So, I mean, the guy has plans. He's smart, he's careful. Wouldn't have been his fault. I mean, I suppose you could make an argument that it's his fault because he didn't uh, make that connection, whatever. But no, it would have been the ground man's fault. Would have, would have had that blood on his hands. It just, it could be avoided just maybe by talking about it and uh, getting the buzz out there about it. Wouldn't be fair. I know there ain't no guarantees in life, but I kind of want to die better than that. I want to die like old after I contribute my max to the world, whatever it is I'm supposed to do. Or I want to die like in an honor, you know. I don't want some accident uh, like that. There's a lot of ways to die. I, I like to die maybe uh, saving um, somebody else, something like that. But man, these 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 graphic, gnarly, unnecessary accidents. Got to be a better way to die. I gotta take these guys over to this job I've been a little bit long-winded trying to come up with like some kind of conclusion I feel like I'm just beating this into dead horse submission I mean I have been for years but I mean I want to say like oh be safe you know we all say that be safe out there climb safe blah 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 well you can't I know that sounds ridiculous, but the truth is you're all going to die. We're all going to die. We got everything from germs on the grocery cart to planes, trains, and automobiles, and that car maybe could crash into me. We've got cancer and diseases after us. We've got this psychopath about to shoot up the mall or some person you think you have a safe relationship with is nuts. Um, we all could be nuts at any given time. Um, we got depression, we got these addictions, kind of things we choose to sort of kill ourselves slowly with or quickly or have an accident from. But I guess what I'm saying is, uh, you know, and then you want to go and add tree guy to the adventurous life. I mean, just, just living in general is like, wow, what a wild, cool, I mean, it's like better than a video game adventure, you know, it's, uh, you don't have like extra lives in the video game in this video game so i guess what i'm saying is is uh don't rope chip or die uh and climbers be careful don't bomb the ground men ground men uh don't kill your fellow man climbers don't let your fellow man kill you. Find some cool way to die. I'm rolling up to the job now. And uh, thanks for listening. I, I know I've talked a lot. I just did that thing where you put your credit card on the seat in front of you and then just get out and it slides off the seat and gets donated to the ghetto. So exciting life out there for credit cards and debit cards and money too, I guess.